Round of applause. Okay. Thanks, Justin, for this very uh, friendly introduction. So, yeah, this is the photo, what we see here, of Force Asia last year. And, uh, yeah, it's really uh, um, amazing, and we're very happy um, how many people are joining the Force Asia Summit. Um, but actually, Force Asia is uh, more. And not everyone uh, knows that uh, we have a lot of other activities um, at Force Asia. So, for example, like uh, uh, we know that we organize events, but we also organize um, a lot of meetups. Not every meetup is in um, um, our own meetup groups. Um, often we just uh, uh, work with others, uh, other groups together. So, that one is uh, uh, pretty well known. But then we have Force Asia Labs. Um, a lot of students already know FOSS Asia Labs um, because here we also collect all the ideas for our coding contests. So um, if you want to know like uh, where do we uh, uh, collaborate with people, what do we do, how can you join, that's a good starting point um, for developers and education and training. So we have uh, um, organized many workshops together, for example, with the UNESCO or with uh, development corporations, um, for example, in Vietnam or in Thailand. So uh, we are also active here. Um, CODEHEAT, for example, here we had the um, um, get-together, we had the, the award here today. So that's also one of the um, um, outreach programs. So I would like to give you a few numbers um, here, a few facts. So. We have over 1,000 registered contributors um, on our GitHub at FOSS Asia. So I'm not talking about people who registered for the newsletter. These are really uh, developers who are registered on GitHub. So that's uh, pretty great. Of course, not everyone can always contribute, but they already say, yes, I'm part of this community. Um, I want to get updates on GitHub if there's a new issue open or if something happens. We have a lot of projects. If you go to the channel, you will um, see all different kinds of projects, but um, I would like to mention the most uh, uh, successful ones recently. So in the last year, we had more than 20,000 merged pull requests um, in our open event project. Um, I will show you in a moment uh, more about the open event project. Um, it has three components. One is the open event server that all of you used uh, to get uh, your ticket. You see there are a lot of bugs, but actually we achieved to get you here. You got your ticket and you got in. So for us, that's a very big success. Um, and uh, then we have a, a web app and we have an Android app that are generated. I will talk in a bit more about that. Another project um, is the big data collection project, um, LockLark that was introduced here in previous Force Asia summits as well, and SUSE AI. So, apart from that, many small tools. We have a FIMPME photo app, recently uh, got uh, more uh, like uh, interest again. Um, the idea is to have an open source alternative to, let's say, um, Instagram or other tools. Um, we have an event collector. The idea is like not everyone will uh, uh, host the event on the open event project, but maybe they would like to get their data uh, out of Eventbrite, for example. So how can we do that? How can we pass the data? How can we have like a simple way, uh, click and get all your data out of it? So that's an event collector that we're working on. Or just yesterday, actually, we realized the way we print the badges here for the event is really not good. It takes a lot of time and a lot of headache. Who can do it? Uh, like, what uh, proprietary tools we have? So I was communicating with a lot of people around the world to help us. Uh, Victoria, right? Uh, uh, you, are, you were in Seoul, we were communicating, and you have another friend who's also named Victoria, communicating with her. Then we had Donna here, and, and, and like we tried to convert formats and so on. There must be an easier way. So yesterday we started the batch printer uh, and we already have the first version. So next year, yeah, we're advancing. Um, apart from that, we are getting into hardware. Hardware is very challenging because the um, hardware developers that we get on board, they're very happy to share like the software that's built on top of the hardware, but sharing their firmware is still something new to them. It's a surprise to me because I know OpenWRT, for example, that's running on 
uh, the, uh, the routers, like uh, Wi-Fi routers, for example, and for me it was like just normal that everyone shares it. But for many hardware developers, um, it's something new. So we are talking to them and we are involving them in our pocket science lab. Um, here, uh, Praveen is here at the event. He will also talk with about it. So a few insights. So what are our coding programs? Uh, m most of you, I don't know most, but like who knows Google Sum of Code? I guess yeah a lot of people here, right? So we are very happy to participate in Google Sum of Code for many years and uh, we have a lot of projects in there but actually there are more pro uh, programs. Also RGSOC, Rails Girl Summer of Code. So great, we don't have so many Rails projects but we're in the Summer of Code with three projects this year as well. Then there are other uh, um, uh, programs like, for example, Coden, Google Coden, uh, here in Singapore actually, we had a lot of participation from Dunman High School, um, a lot of the volunteers who were here contributed to, uh, uh, to, the pro uh, to our projects here through um, Coden. And we have Code Heat. Code Heat, um, you had the information here earlier today with the award, is a program where people contribute to projects and out of the top 10 contributors, a jury will choose um, who are the, uh, like, who, who should win, who should be the winners um, of the contest. Yeah, but we could have more. Why not have Code Freeze? or something like that, yeah? And, and we could get more people on board, so uh, starting to get into the ideas. Okay, so before we go into this, I would like to, uh, to you a bit like we always say how awesome we are, but I would like to actually show uh, this and that will take a <coughs> few minutes. So here we have a screenshot, for example, of the web app and our goal is always like let's give people the freedom. So what we do is we, on our organizer system we are generating, uh, or you can generate a file and take all the data of your event out. Yeah, this is just like a WordPress that you move to another space. And with that data, you can generate web apps or Android apps, whatever you like. So if you see our website, our web app on the website, this is a generated website that like, has features already like uh, shed.org, for example. Um, you can bookmark things, um, you can search things, and the best thing is it's all hosted on static sites, like on, on, as a static site. So you can host it, for example, uh, on GitHub. Some of you might have uh, realized it. Um, this uh, uh, video here just showed that we have an automatic deployment to GitHub. So that's already there. Um, um, if you're GitHub, you can just uh, like generate your event through our uh, event server and get a static website um, that you can um, expand where you can search, where you can do a lot of things. Um, then we have um, a way to go directly to tracks, for example. We also like have uh, um, a way to go to, to speakers with more information. You can share all this work for speakers. You can click on the speakers and it goes to the uh, talk of the speaker. I thought uh, I show this uh, uh, web app here a bit, uh, so uh, it, it also makes it easier for you to understand how you can use it over the next two days. It's on our website, right? So, all on GitHub here. Um, on this project alone, we had 36 uh, contributors. Another project that we talk about is LockLock. So LockLock here, we see a lot, a lot of code. Um, LockLock actually uh, shows you, um, um, like the, 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 the basis of the project is a server, and the server gives out data in JSON format. So with this, uh, based on this JSON format, you can generate a lot. Like let's say you have um, Twitter as a source and you use LockLock to collect Twitter data. We will enrich this source with uh, sentiment information, with geolocation information. We will try to get out whatever is possible. So you have the source, um, you have the JSONs, and now you can build web apps using this JSON. For example, here we have locklock.net, and you can see what is possible. Here, for example, you can sort uh, your followers and the people who, fo who you follow uh, based on how many followers they have. Actually, for me, it's a very simple function. Why, why can't I get that on Twitter? Yeah? So here you can get it. And uh, we set up uh, apps.locklock.org um, where people now can upload their own apps. 
How will they make use of this data? I don't know, but they can uh, upload the apps. Here, for example, you see you can build um, like uh, uh, charts or diagrams, um, all different kinds of things. So, um, yeah, we're liberating data uh, in LogLock. Here's an emotion and data visualization. There will be um, some students who give a talk here on this. Uh, I think it is on Sunday morning. Um, so it's already used like in schools and in different, uh, um, for different, uh, for different uh, um, uh, uh, ways. Tweet, sentiment, visualizer, and so on. Okay, so I think we're getting uh, to the next one, and that is Suzy in a moment. How is Suzy and LockLock connected? Well, actually, LockLock is, uh, is the big data aggregator, and uh, so we're getting in a lot of data, but uh, uh, what do we do with this data then? Okay, we, have, uh, we can have some visual visualizations, and we can have all the source code here on Twitter, um, but actually, we can do much more. And uh, you heard this morning the presentation of um, uh, Michael Christen, Michael Christen, um, uh, who talked like what we can do with Suzy. So Suzy um, is actually maybe I don't know 60 percent of the code maybe of LockLock. Uh, actually, LockLock just became more bloated kind of way. So we uh, at one point decided uh, to separate it. And what can Suzy do? If we implement, uh, like, we just need to add some APIs sometimes, but like already uh, uh, to, to APIs to get more features. Um, but I think at the moment we have like 10 APIs implemented and we have the whole data from um, the LockLock server, like which is um, eight terabyte of Twitter data. So that is already requires some server resources. Um, but already with that, we can do a lot of things. There are a lot of videos online where people talk uh, to Siri. Uh, for example, like, uh, Siri, do you love me? All these kind of things. Uh, or Siri, can you do this and that for me? A lot of these things are actually, they don't require AI. They are simple rules, right? And so all of that, we could do it pretty easily, right? And uh, um, here we show you uh, what is possible already. Uh, like you can compute something, you can ask uh, about mathematics, um, you can ask what time it is, it's just a video, so that's not the real time right now, um, uh, and uh, Susie can, can already answer this. How many mentions are on Reddit about FOSS Asia? Here you go, FOSS Asia was 13 times mentioned on Reddit. Who tweeted recently about FOSS Asia? Creative DE. Do you have huh? access? to a previous configuration. Okay, Star Trek people love that, right? Access to data, access to a previous configuration. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot do that, right? We don't have that implemented yet. It's not a, a, a complete Star Trek kind of things, but we're getting there. Unconscious state ac activated. Cognition only, please. Oh, Susie will not panic. Carry on entering character mode. Old freddled grunt bugly. Thy micturations are to me as plottled gabble blot jits on a legit B. I don't know if, I, if that's correct, but something like that, right? I'm probably able to replace every job ex except for information retrieval experts. So that's what Susie's going to be in five years, and you all can be part of it. You all can be part of it. We need all of you on different levels. For example, uh, young students, they can just help us to find questions and answer. Susie will soon have a teaching mode. So where you say, uh, um, uh, you can ask a question to Susie, but you can also say, uh, Susie, ask me a question. And then you can teach Susie something. Of course, like, just like Wikipedia, people will be there and uh, teach Susie something bad. Right? So we can develop different levels of verification of registered users and so on. So that's where AI comes in. Okay, so I'm getting to the end of my session and uh, um, I would like to tell you that we have these four areas that we want to talk with you over the next two days. How can we scale projects, what we are doing? Yeah, how can we really uh, make them big? How can we identify problem solvers, people who can help us to grow these projects and in Asia it's always a big question you can't just hang out you need to make a living so maybe do we need a force Asia accelerator something like that uh, that's uh, a question that we can pose or can we work together 
and I'm looking here for your ideas over the next two days. So I'm at the end, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. It gave you a few insights. Um, there's so much more, and uh, yeah, please join us, stay on board, and thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. A round of applause for Mario. And next up, we have something really, really, really exciting.